Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 56 of my Iron Man Hulkbuster build. This is the last few episodes of the series, so we're going to try and get the torso finished today with the extra lighting, get the back panels on, painted and weathered, and also do fill-in sections around the arms and these other gaps in the suit as best I can anyway. Then we've probably got probably two episodes after this to try and get the legs finished, and then at some point I need to take it somewhere to test it because it currently doesn't fit in my house or car. So have a look at the last episode to see where we are with the electronics and the control system and the episode before that and all of the features we've got with the pop-up shoulders, the helmet, lighting that I've got so far. This time, as I say, we're just going to get on and continue with that, so I'm going to get right on with it. We've got to fill in quite a few gaps in the suit um, and there's a few in the through the torso here you can see through. I've put the cod plate back on for now. There's quite a few through the arms and obviously particularly in the arm here, but obviously I need to get my arm in from the suit through here so I can actually operate this joystick. So we can't really fill in this side, but I need to do something to uh, sort of restrict these massive gaps that are all the way through the torso. And there's several ways that I'm going to fill those gaps in. I'm going to tell you a little story now. It's the story of a princess and her father, the king, had three daughters and he wanted to decide who to leave his kingdom to, or something like that. And so he set a challenge for his daughters. Whoever can take two pence, it was a lot of money in those days, and fill the old barn with something for just two pence will inherit my kingdom, he said. So the daughters went off to try and find something for two pence that would fill this huge barn. So the first daughter went off and bought some hay bales, but of course when she threw them in the barn, she could scatter the hay on the floor and it only just covered the floor, but it didn't, of course, fill the barn. And the second daughter went off and bought something else. And obviously you can't get much for two pence, even in those days. So whatever it was she bought didn't fill the barn. And the third daughter went off and she bought candles. Two pence worth of candles. I think she got five or ten, I don't really know. And she lit all the candles and filled the barn with light. And uh, obviously inherited the kingdom. So the moral of the story is, of course, um, that light fills any gap and also to think positively and things. So the plan is to fill the gaps with gap filling material, which we'll have a look at in a moment, and lots of light, because if you shine really bright lights in someone's eyes, they can't see in. Here is my gap filling material. This is extra large non-slip boot mat, which is quite lightweight. It's a sort of foam material. It's basically a kind of rubber mesh. So let's just open that and see how much we've got. Quite a lot. I've got two of these rolls and they didn't cost very much. So if we spread all this out, we should find we've got a fairly flexible kind of stretchy mesh stuff. It's fairly dense actually, so not too much is going to be uh, seen through it, but obviously it's really flexible unlike floor mat foam. So yeah, you can really not see through that too much. So basically all the remaining gaps are going to get filled with this and then some strategically placed really bright lights shining either across the surface or directly out, um, sort of under the arms and things like that. So um, the, basically the whole suit lights up really bright and no one looks too closely. There are still going to be some gaps to get my arms in, but I'm going to try and make those holes in this um, that I just get the right amount of movement through. The back of the suit is a different story, of course. So we've got the back panels, which I've got here. But these still need uh, weathering, they need the lighting putting in here. There's gaps from the back to put the LEDs in, so that'll need a lighting node on my control system. Have a look back to the last couple of episodes to see about that. So it's quite modular and I can easily add that onto the menu with a little display in the helmet. I've got to tidy up all this wiring, but also I've still got parts I never got made, like the back of the arms here. And all of this is open around, um, around the back of the forearms. So the plan is not to make any more rigid panels because I can't really bear any more weight on this. It's just about too heavy as it is. So the plan is basically to use more of that mesh painted, uh, more foam if I can on these pieces, and then just basically lay that mesh over and try and paint it red and just get a sort of mesh effect. And that's going to match the mesh that comes down to actually fill the flexible sections. So it's not as great as I'd like it to be, but it is the back of the suit. And as I said when I did the back doors, they're not great, but I don't care because it's the back. I've put the back panels back on, so there we go. They cover up quite a lot of the sort of insides of the arms there. So all I really need to do now is make some backs for the arms and do the painting and put the lights in, and that pretty much makes the back of the torso. 
I've cut out some foam so these go right on the back of the lower upper arm which is where the motors go which is what these cutouts for so they're going to get PVA'd up and then just painted with the red paint the same as I did most of the back of the legs and these parts are foam which I've glued some of that mesh onto obviously um, once they get pulled around the lower arm it'll get tighter and then I've cut two more bits of mesh which are to go on top of the existing foam on the uh, upper upper arms so that should give me sort of a mix of some of this mesh and some of these other things just to break it up a bit. Here they are, so these ones have just had PVA primer and paint on, they're a bit patchy but they're going to be weathered anyway, that's just straight on the foam. And these are the ones that have got the mesh on them which um, the paint seems to have taken okay on the whole. That's with no primer or anything, just sprayed straight on. So we'll get these stuck on, I've got the other bits of spare mesh as well to mount. This piece goes here and it's got that cut out so the mechanism that operates the elbow is okay. And this piece will fit right down here so let's get those glued on both sides and a bit of mesh on the top. I've stuck all those parts on as you can see and um, it's not totally terrible. The texture actually doesn't look too much out of place. You can't really tell it's textured in fact from a distance. So as I said previously it is the back so I'm not too bothered about the quality. And if you remember the story of the king and the princess you won't be able to see it anyway once bright lights are bleaching your eyes out. It's time to do my favourite type of weathering with rattle cans. Well, that doesn't look too bad. Now, actually, I think that textured stuff works quite well. I've got a few highlights to do, and then we can get on with some of the fill-in sections. Well, not too terrible on the whole, so there are a few reflections there from the light, but on the whole it's pretty much in keeping with the rest of the suit. However, as soon as I turn the suit slightly sideways, you can see this massive gap that goes all the way inside. So I need to try and put some of that foam in there, and obviously that's apparent from the front as well. I've made a piece that fits in here, and it's a bit like a curtain rail, which slots over there and it screws onto the wood at the top. And that's going to hold some of that mesh so that I can put a piece in here but I can still get my arm in the front. Obviously there's nothing to attach it to at the top because that's where the open mechanism is. I've mounted that in there so I've just glued that on to the top and bottom. I might cut a scoop out for my arm to go in but for now it's just a bit of a screen so you can't see directly inside and don't forget those eye bleaching lights that are going in front of it. I've put another piece, don't know if you can just see it, just inside that chest piece there. So although I do obviously need to get my arms out to go down the arms, hopefully that'll have some effect at just blocking out those bits and pieces where you can see in. I've put some of that mesh on the elbows as well. It's kind of crumpled up because it's going to uh, sort of scrunch as I bend the elbow. Um, there's still obviously quite a big gap on the inside here, but there's not too much I can do about that moment because I do need to get my arms in and move them all around. So I need to think a bit further about that. Let's take a look at that lighting controller. So I've got some NeoPixels, six of them, which go in the back panels in those lit features. I've also got these 10 watt LEDs. They go up to 12 volts, so I can just switch them straight on the battery. So I'm using an Arduino Pro Mini and two relays, which will turn on enough current for those. I've got um, a ULN2803 Darlington array there, which is just sourcing enough current to switch the relay coils from the Arduino but then the relays will switch the 12 volts to these LEDs, which I need to mount in those cavities. I fitted the NeoPixels in those light up features. Let's just turn them on with my smartphone. 
There they go, so they're nice and bright. There's a eight LED NeoPixel ring in each one. They're gonna remain on most of the time, I'd have thought, as long as uh, the same as the uh, very bright LEDs, but I can turn them on and off with either Bluetooth or the menu as per the other things. That Arduino Pro Mini and the relays are just sitting above the left shoulder there, so I now need to wire in the really bright LEDs. You can see there's uh, a bit of a connector block sat there, which I need to wire them into. I've now installed those other LEDs in the gaps, basically, so we'll have a look, a closer look at those in a moment by looking into the gap, but for now I'm just going to turn all the lights on with my smartphone again. So there's quite a lot of light in there, you can see it lighting up the whole room practically, at least uh, from some of the places, and you can see it shines across the back of the arms and it does the same at the front, which actually highlights quite a lot of the features in the suit. So um, let's spin that around, have a look at the front, then we'll have a look through the gaps. Here's the front, and those are the lights. You can see that just shining on the biceps there from inside the gaps. Let's have a closer look. Most people are shorter than Hulkbuster, so I'm going to film it from down here. You can just about see that yellowy white LED in the gap there. When I turn it on, you will be able to see it. There we go. So basically, um, it's a bit more diffused in real life. But basically it just bleaches your eyes out and you can't see through the gap anymore. So I may make these adjustable so they're not on just all the time or on with the other lights in the back. They could turn on separately. They could still be driven from the same driver. Obviously there's some on the other side and some at the back. Here we are around the back. So it's pretty dark in there anyway because of that mesh that I put in. I could add some features in there like some conduit and stuff which might come along if I can be bothered. Uh, but you're not going to be able to see much in there anyway due to the really bright light that's in there. So um, no one's really going to look in there for too long because it is extremely bright. So those LEDs are just kind of dangling there at the moment. And I need to decide if they need metal brackets, but I'm going to stick some in the legs. So we'll have to see how that works out. printed these parts and they're not orange juices they're going to be part of the hand repulsors so I've put some LED arrays together there they're just normal LEDs the plan is they're not particularly high powered because they're going to be on all the time and the two parts just make up this kind of thing to diffuse the light out so they can just sit there glowing there's one and there's the other and those are just going to sit there glowing basically I'm making these last few videos in the series quite snappy and just getting things together and showing that on video because you've probably seen me painting foam a number of times throughout all 50 plus episodes of this series. So that's all there is for this time. Next time we're going to give the legs the same treatment and there's probably one after that for finishing because there's still quite a few bits of fill-in sections and so on to make on those legs. Again, I'm going to use light to fill gaps as well as some fill-in material. It's going to be quite interesting because there's some quite big gaps that need to compress as the legs bend. So we'll have to sort of see what the limit is of that and what we can fit in there. So don't forget to subscribe to check out more updates, the very last few, in fact, on this project and updates on other projects. And also check out my Instagram and other social media accounts which the links are for in the description to this video.